Hello everybody, welcome back to today's little Hello everybody, hello everybody, hello everybody, welcome back to today's episode. It's about budget builds, like this one. Can you build a car on a budget? And the answer is simply yes, you can. Thanks so much for watching this this uh, this very informative video. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out. All jokes aside, can you build a budget car? Yes, you can. You don't have to have all the money in the world, you don't have to be rich, you don't have to, you know, spend thousands of dollars on building a car, you can build a budget car. If anyone didn't tell you this, you can, I'm telling you now, so believe it. So, with that being said, you can build a budget car, but you do have to be aware of a couple of things. So, obviously you're on a budget, you don't have the most money in the world, so, and that's completely fine, but you gotta be aware of that, and you gotta act accordingly, so, uh, one of the things, you know, you have to kinda accept, is that you gotta look for alternatives. Uh, let's say talk for parts. You can get a nine, I don't I don't have one, I don't know why I just pointed to that. But you can get a $900, $1,000 exhaust, or you can get a $200 exhaust. I'll kinda like put them over here to see if you, you can compare. Like a Tomei is like a thousand, $1,000 or something. Or you can get like a Megan Racing one, it's like 200, 300, or 500. I think an ISR is like the cheapest one, and it sounds pretty good. So you don't have to go, all the way up and get the most expensive one and the most expensive one doesn't always mean the best one so there's that that's pretty good so another thing would be like if you wanted to lower your car there are a couple ways that you can do that you don't only have to get coilovers you don't only have to have bags or something you can go for springs if you're on a budget it does the job it's completely fine so you can get springs you can get springs and shocks it's completely fine does the job lowers the car uh, as far as you know going a little bit cheaper don't cut your springs or heat your springs that's just not safe uh, I mean yeah it'll lower your car but just you know if you want to be safe just get springs save up a little bit it's fine it's much cheaper than coilovers and uh, yeah other than that exhaust springs uh, wheels uh, there are very very like there, there are just so many different companies that make wheels just do your research make sure you, you stay in the budget there are a bunch of rep wheels. You don't have to get work wheels or you know BBSs or something. Those are over the top. I don't, I don't have them either. Uh, you can get a bunch of alternatives, and uh, there's a whole debate about rep being good or bad. But if you're on a budget, you really don't have much choice unless you want to save up all your like ten thousand dollars and blow it on wheels and tires or something. But you know you can still be on a budget and have nice looking wheels. So the first thing I said was being on a budget means that you do have to search for alternatives but uh, like I just showed you that really doesn't mean that you have to be getting you know ricer parts or like cheapest parts you can find on eBay or something there are a bunch of nice parts that you can get you just have to do your research and uh, if that's just depending on if you want to put in your time or not and one of the things that you do have to accept is that stock is okay sometimes like I know you want that wide body I know you want that crazy arrow and the big wang or something, but stock is okay sometimes. Like, your, your car's stock body with nice wheels and tires is completely fine. You don't have to go overboard and get, you know, a couple thousand dollar body kits or like the big wing that's like, I don't know, two grand or something. I don't even know how much they cost, but you don't have to do that. Stock is fine. Some parts on your car are even better stock than aftermarket, like your intake on a 350Z. I've done a lot of research about it. The stock airbox is completely fine and it actually functions way better than an aftermarket cold air intake. Just did a quick research and that's literally what I found. So you might not believe me, but you know, stock is fine. Your bot stock body on your car is completely fine. It looks good with good fitment. And there are a lot of cars out there that do have wide bodies and they do complain about their fitment. Like not their not their wheel and tire fitment, but their panels not fitting properly, their bumpers and like the over fenders that they get, they don't fit properly. I mean, you have a stock car, the, the factory clearly made it fit nice and everything is good. So just keep it clean and it's, it's gonna look much better than, you know, a wide body car that does have a little like spacing and gap between the panels. So you don't have to have the wide body. And that brings me to my next point. Uh, let's talk, let's talk back there. And the next point and the final point is what you need versus what you want. And I know these things go hand in hand sometimes. I come across it a lot with me. Uh, like I probably don't need this loud exhaust. But the stuff that you need are the stuff that you want all the time. And sometimes the stuff you want aren't the stuff you need. 
Like you probably don't want to go through changing your gaskets and everything. It's a pain in the ass to do. Like so, some of the, like the maintenance stuff that you have to do, you probably don't want to go through doing that, or you don't want to pay, you know, a mechanic to do that. But you kind of have to. So that's something that you need to do versus something what you want to do. And you probably want to spend that money elsewhere, but you know. You gotta do your maintenance. And stuff that you want, but you don't necessarily need. Like, you probably don't need that big of a wing. You probably don't need a wide body that, that big. You probably don't need that, but you want it. So, being on a budget build, you kind of have to, like, sacrifice a little bit of that. I don't know, like, I'd, I'd want a wide body. It looks cool, but I'm on a budget, so I can't really do that. So, I gotta accept the fact that I, I'm poor. You gotta accept the fact that you can't afford it. So you just gotta, you know, find alternatives. Oh, shop around. I didn't talk about that. So wait, got a little tiring, changing the camera angle all the time. So we're gonna talk about this one here. Uh, shopping around. While I talk about that, I think it's a good idea to talk about the stuff that I got, cause I shop around a lot and you can find very good deals on like, you know, used parts. And that's, that's a very good thing for people on a budget build. Like my exhaust cost me like 250 bucks, whereas if I bought it brand new, it would be like 700 bucks. And my wheels, I got two of them for like 200, and then the, the other two were like 350 or 400, I think, brand new. You just gotta shop around. Make make sure you look around your area. You know, an hour, or two hour drive isn't isn't that big of a deal to go get a part that you can get a really good deal on. So you just gotta shop around. Let me just do like a recap of what I just said because I totally forgot what I just said. I'll do a recap right here. All right, so the first thing I said was you need to accept the fact that being on a budget means you gotta find alternatives. You don't have to have the best parts. And the best isn't like the most expensive. The most expensive doesn't mean the best. I don't know why I said that. And the second thing uh, I said was, you know, finding the alternatives but you don't also have to have the most ricer and the cheapest parts. And the definition of ricer totally depends on you. I don't know what you define it as. So not the cheapest parts. You don't have to go to eBay and like sort by the cheapest and get that. That's not what I mean. I just mean, you know, being reasonable. And the third thing I said was sometimes stock is okay. Uh, number three, uh, stock is okay. You don't have to have the wide body if you can't afford it. If you can afford it, by, by all means, go ahead and buy it if you can. If you can't afford it, don't you know bust your balls trying to get a wide body. Don't spend all your money trying to get a wide body, and then you have no money for gas or like to do simple maintenance stuff. So that's literally what like the budget build thing is. Like you got to make sure your car is running right, but at the same time, if you want it to look good, you got to save up on the side a little bit and do a little bit of shopping around and you know get the parts that you want. Find the alternatives. Get rep wheels or something like, or you know get a quieter exhaust for the time being that you don't have money. So just, you know, that's pretty much it. I think that's that's all I wanna say. I'm on a budget build too, so if you wanna, you know, see what I do, I just made like two videos getting parts from Wish.com. Wish.com is cheap, man. Don't use parts from Wish.com. Anyways, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope I could, you know, enlighten you all <laughs> about doing a budget build. I've just been doing it myself. It does take a while, it does take longer than, you know, if I had $20,000, my, my car probably wouldn't look like this right now, but I don't. So, um, anyways, you wanna follow along the journey of, you know, building this budget car? It's gonna look much better, I promise you. It's just gonna take me a little more time because I'm on a budget. All right, peace out. If you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing down below. Don't forget to like this video. If you like this video, if you don't like it, please let me know what you didn't like about it so I can, you know, try to improve. I'll see you in the next episode. Peace out. It's like all those maintenance mods that you have to do. What the fuck are maintenance mods?